Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to take your FT Tenant control module and hook it up into your FT Tenant. Now this application is gonna be going through a three channel and a four channel configuration. The main thing you're gonna be learning in this episode is gonna be where to plug in your ESC, your elevator, your rudder, and your ailerons. Now keep in mind, whenever you're doing a three channel trainer version, your rudder channel is gonna be plugged in into your aileron port. We're gonna cover that here shortly. The materials we're gonna be needing is our FT Tenant, our FT Tenant control module, and also your ESC and your motor. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. The first installation we're gonna be doing with our FT Tenant control module is gonna be on a three channel application. Now, if you've been following along and you're a beginner and this is your very first model, this should be the configuration that you're building along with me. The setup that I want you to have before we get started is I want your motor to be installed. I want your ESC to be Velcroed right on the side like you see here. And I'd like all your wires to be hanging out the side. Once you have that, for the Aura, we're first gonna take our ESC wire and we're gonna plug it into servo port number one. Now a couple things to point out here. You're gonna notice that our signal wire is lined up with the little pin that has a horseshoe next to it. This indicates signal. The next connection we're gonna make is gonna be the connection that matches up with our rudder. So we're gonna find this and don't worry if we get it backwards, all we simply need to do is reverse it. And we're gonna plug that into servo port number two. Finally, we're gonna take the final port, which should be our elevator, and we're gonna plug that into servo port number four. You're gonna notice below each servo port that you're gonna have an S1 through S5. That stands for servo port one, two, three, four, and five. It's an important thing, whenever you're making your connections, make sure all of your signal wires line up with the pin row that has a little horseshoe or the signal indicator next to it. Depending on the kit or the electronics you have, you may notice that your signal wire is either a yellow, an orange, or a white. Now, once you've graduated from the three channel wing to the four channel wing, which is called the sport wing or your swept back wing, to change that, all you simply need to do is move your rudder servo port from port number two or three to port number five, Next, you'll take your servo Y harness. You'll plug that into port number two or port number three. After that, we'll tape both ends just by where the wings are gonna be so then our aileron servos can easily plug in. Now that we have everything plugged in, your Aura should already be bound. We covered that in a previous video. Now let's go ahead and power on both our Aura and our transmitter. Anytime that you're powering up your model, you always wanna make sure you turn on the transmitter first. This is a safety thing and it also makes the plane flying the easiest. Next, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our ESC. Now you're gonna notice if you have a stock FT Aura 5, when I pull back on the stick on the elevator, the elevator's gonna go up. When I push the right on the aileron stick, the rudder is gonna go to the right, and of course, left is left and forward is down. Now there is one feature with the stock Aura that is not automatically activated, and that is called level assist. Level assist is gonna give you the ability for the airplane to always level out, no matter what attitude it's in. This is an incredibly useful tool, especially if you're a beginner. To activate level assist, the first thing we need to do is go into quick set. To activate quick set, we're gonna hold down on the bind and the trim button both for about seven seconds until the LED turns green. There we go. Once we're in quick set to activate level assist, all we need to do is hold down on the bind button for about six seconds and we should see our control cycle for two times. And the lights turn blue, I release. Level assist is now activated. We can now exit quick set, and that's simply by holding down both on the bind and the trim button. One, two, three, four, five, six. The light went out. I'm gonna release. Rapid flashing blue means it's resetting. At this point, it's really important that we reset our power. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this. Now that our level assist has been activated and everything's hooked up, let's go ahead and install our control module into the tenant, and then we can power it on and test all of our controls. The easiest way to install our control module is kind of just gather up the wires, kind of spin them around on your finger a little bit, and then to press it into place. And I'm just gonna tuck all the wires down in, and we'll mount this on the Velcro. You're gonna notice the control module is locked in by the little tiny tab that we have on the rear, and also by the notch we have in the front. If you wish to secure your control module anymore, or maybe you used it a bunch of times, swapped it out, and it's getting loose, just put a little piece of tape on both sides, and it's gonna lock it in really good. It's really important to make sure the control module is flush on both sides, and that's not turning an angle, so the flight controller can work properly. Now let's go ahead and install our battery one last time. Just gonna put it in place here. Now that we have everything powered on, let's go ahead and check our control throws, make sure everything works good. When I pull back on my elevator stick, what I should see is my elevator going up 
When I push forward, I should see my elevator going down. And when I move my aileron stick to the right, I should see the rudder go to the right, and of course, to the left. This is also a really good time to make sure all of your controls are centered with the trims neutral and to lock down both of your linkage stoppers. At this point, we're ready to put our trainer wing on. We're gonna slide this into place. There's one rubber band. I always like to put all four of our rubber bands on just to make sure it's nice and solid, especially with the trainer wing. Now on the bottom of the trainer and the sport wing, you're gonna see two dots. On the speed wing, you're not gonna have dots because depending on the configuration you choose, you're gonna to have to identify your own center of gravity. These dots are gonna be where you're gonna place your fingers to check the proper center of gravity or what we call CG. Proper center of gravity is definitely needed in order to get the plane to fly properly. And every wing design is gonna have a different center of gravity. Typically, the proper center of gravity is between 20 and 30% back from the leading edge of your wing. With my battery installed all the way forward, I'm gonna place my fingers on both the dots here. And what I should see is that the plane is perfectly level or just a touch nose down. It's always a really good idea for your first flights for your plane to be slightly nose down because it's gonna give a little bit more stability as it flies through the air. Now that our wing is installed, our final step is to install the prop. We wanna make sure two things. Our motor is spinning in the proper direction to make this prop produce thrust. And also that the numbers on the prop are always pointing towards the direction of flight. So when you change from a tractor configuration where your motor is up in the front to a pusher configuration, you're gonna to need to reverse your motor and also spin your prop 180 degrees. With the numbers pointing forwards, in order for this prop to produce thrust, it has to spin counterclockwise. We wanna make sure when we run up our motor that we see that same counterclockwise motion. Once we know that, we can go ahead and unplug the battery and install our prop. Now for installing the battery, we're gonna take some of our extra Velcro that's included in the kit, and we're gonna put the opposite side, whether it's fuzzy or prickly, onto the front fuselage and the gap that's left in front of the control module. Well, congratulations, friends. Your FT tenant is now ready to take out to the flying field. There's a couple things that you wanna make sure with this plane before your every first flight or every first maiden, and that's covered in six quick tips for a successful first flight. All right, friends, at this point, we are now done with the journey of the flight test tenant. Congratulations on your build and hopefully your first amazing new flights. And as always, thank you so much for being part of the flight test family. Can't wait to see you for the next build.